Estimation of nonlinear mediation models can be a bit challenging. When we first learn about mediation, we learn about the linear case. For the linear case, we might define mediation as a product of two coefficients from x to m, from m to y, and we also learn that the full mediation or partial mediation can be differentiated based on this coefficient beta y1 here. If it's zero or non-significant, then we have full mediation. If it's non-zero and significant, then we have partial mediation. In another video, I talked about the problems of this approach. The first problem was that this is not applicable to all nonlinear models. It works for, for some nonlinear models, but not most nonlinear models. There's also a problem of, of causal heterogeneity. So if the effect of x to m is not the same for everybody, but it varies between individuals, and if the effect of m to y is not the same for everybody, but it varies between individuals, then uh, this model of, of product of coefficients approach assumes that the variation of beta m1 is uncorrelated to variation beta y2. And I also talked about how we can't use any statistical model as a definition of mediation because mediation is a causal concept and not tied to any particular model. Now let's start looking at how do we estimate nonlinear mediation models. But before we talk about nonlinear mediation models, it's good to remind that for linear models, the, the Baron and Kenny or product of coefficients approach is still valid. So uh, this article by Imai and co-authors, which is probably one of the most cited sources on non estimating nonlinear mediation models, still recommends the product of coefficients if your model is linear. Of course, how we check assumptions and how we actually go about estimating these models has evolved since 1986 when Baron and Kenny was published but the basic idea that you multiply two paths together is still the same. But it doesn't work for all nonlinear models. Let's take a look at how nonlinear media models are then estimated. We need to understand first uh, the counterfactual model based definition of mediation effect. So Imai uh, defines mediation as difference between two outcomes only of one of which is observed. So this is the outcome of uh, of an individual which is either treated or not and the mediation is assumed as or mediation is either observed as after mediation or it is a counterfactual outcome and we compare it against the outcome where that individual is has not received a or the mediation mediator is not affected by the treatment that can be either observed or counterfactual depending on what we actually observed. So the general estimation principle is that we, we, uh, we record the observed outcomes, we estimate a counterfactual for each individual. So for, for the cases that are treated, we observe the case under treatment and the mediator uh, under treatment, we uh, predict or we somehow estimate a counterfactual for that individual where that individual was treated, but the mediator was observed as if not treated. We do the same for the untreated cases for those cases, we observe the case as untreated and mediator under the uh, not, not untreated condition and we estimate somehow what the mediator would be in the treatment condition for that person. So we estimate counterfactual for each individual. Then we estimate the, the uh, individual level causal effect as the difference between these outcomes. And then we take the average of these individual causal effects and that gives us the average causal mediation effect. Now there is the, uh, still the little complexity on how we choose the counterfactual. So one way is to hold the treatment as it is and simply write the mediation. But this article by Nguyen talks about also different options. So which counterfactual do we estimate? And uh, so we observe two outcomes. We observe either individuals under the treatment and the mediator is measured under treatment for those and then we observe individuals who are in the control and then a mediator is observed for the control condition for those individuals. And uh, in EMI's approach, we generate these counterfactuals. So we generate counterfactual by keeping the treatment where it is, either one or zero, and uh, flipping the mediator. So uh, we have this T1, mediator zero means that individual received the treatment and we predict what the moderator would be for that individual if that individual was not treated. 
for this individual under control, we predict what the moderator would be had that individual been treated. So this is one way, but this is not the only way. And another way that Nguyen talks about, which is also, uh, at least according to them, fairly common, is to assume first, uh, generate the counterfactual by assigning these to treatments. So uh, the first counterfactual for the treated case would be generated the same way, but for this untreated case, we would generate the counterfactual not by, by changing the moderator or mediator, but by changing the treatment. And we can do, of course, the opposite so that we uh, change the mediator and, and adjust the treatment so that all cases are untreated, but all cases observe the mediator. Uh, I would say that this, the first one is probably uh, the safest choice because it's kind of middle ground. It's also easiest to implement in your statistical software. But if you do this kind of analysis, doing paper that talks about this decision is worth checking out, as is my explanation on, on how, to, uh, how to choose between these approaches in another video. So let's take a look at what is the general estimation principle for, for this. So uh, there, are, there are estimation strategies. There are two main ways, there are more, but these are the two main ways of estimating these nonlinear mediation effects. Uh, in MICE article 2010 presents one article, one approach. This is called the simulation based approach. So they, they do uh, bit models for outcome and mediator. Then they simulate multiple replications of, uh, of parameters, then apply this kind of formula and then calculate an average that gives you a causal effect. Importantly, this does not uh, depend on, on the functional form of any of these relationships. Then Wanderville talks about another approach where you have a, a regression model. This is called regression based approach. So you estimate two models and then you apply this kind of equation, for example, for binary mediators, and that gives you uh, the natural indirect or the, the causal mediation effect. Let's take a look at these two approaches. They both start with estimating a model or estimating two models. So if we have, this is the baron kenny approach, and we estimate two models. So we estimate a model for mediator, we estimate a model for the outcome, they can be any model, and model for M, model for Y, and then these approaches differ in how we calculate the mediation effect. So we have two models, one for M, one for Y, they can be nonlinear, and then we have the problem of how do we calculate the mediation effect. I'll take a look at the regression based approach first because uh, it's a bit easier to implement in your statistical software. Both of these approaches, the simulation based approach and the mediation and, and the regression based approach are implemented in packages. So you don't, you can apply these without really understanding the estimation principle or the math or how it's programmed. But understanding the, the principle and the math and how it's programmed will make you a better user of these techniques. So let's start with the regression approach because it's a bit easier to implement. And this is from Vanderveel's book, which is a really great resource for the regression based approach. He talks about different combinations of mediator and outcome, and then he goes and proves uh, how, how they, are, they are modeled using regression analysis. And uh, to, to understand what's the meaning of, of all this stuff, we need to uh, define a couple of things. So we need to define first what A star and A is, and A star is the baseline. So if we have a, a, a treatment control kind of scenario, then uh, the baseline is the control, A is the treatment, and uh, then we need to understand this is the mediation, and we need to understand what's, what's this thing here, and what's this thing here, and, and what's this multiplier here. And uh, well, this is just the probability of M under the treatment. So this is uh, the probability of a positive outcome calculated from logistic regression analysis. So you might not recognize that this is actually the, uh, the, the inverse logic that you use in, in the logistic regression, but that's, that's what it is. And then we have the probability of M in baseline. So we compare the differences in probabilities. So uh, we don't actually use the observed M at all. But instead, 
we calculate or we predict what is the probability of M for an individual under treatment, what is the probability of M of that individual under control. So we do these adjusted predictions. We calculate two predictions for each individual, one under the treatment, one under the control, and then we simply uh, multiply that with the effect of M because this is a linear model for the outcome. And uh, this theta 3a is, we can ignore it for now, it's simply because uh, uh, Van der Veel considers the case where the mediator M and the, the x variable, treatment variable are allowed to interact. So, so this is why there's this second term here. So how do you uh, then do this in practice. So how do you move from these equations to statistical software? I'll, I'll show examples using Stata. And uh, my examples use linear models. The reason why I'm using uh, linear models here is that uh, when I, I use this in a class, I give students assignments, I don't want to give them the model assignment, model answer. But you will just replace these equations or these uh, commands with logistic uh, regression and predictions from that to, to calculate using nonlinear models. And the linear model is easier to understand and check. So uh, we, we generate some data. So we have a full mediation model, T is the treatment, M is the mediator, Y is the outcome. We have thousand observations from this uh, hypothetical population. And we start by regressing M on T, so that's the model for M. Then we, uh, we generate observations, uh, we, we store what's the original value of t, we store what's the original value of m, and then uh, we generate uh, mt0, what would be the value, or we predict mt0, what would be the value of the mediator for every case if they were not treated. Then we generate the other outcome, which is uh, under treatment, so this is another adjusted prediction, we adjust that we want to be under the treatment, we calculate a prediction and then average of those will be the uh, average marginal prediction of under treatment. And uh, then uh, we estimate the model for y and we do two predictions, predictions for using y, so we replace first uh, m using uh, the mt0, m outcome, we calculate predictions for y, then we calculate uh, uh, another pre adjusted prediction using m under the, the treatment condition, we calculate another predictions for y, and then the difference between these is the comparisons between uh, y t m t 1, y t m t 0, which is EMI's definition of causal mediation effect. But of course it can be defined in different ways as well. So, this is simple way using simply regression prediction and uh, you can replace this um, well, regress uh, command with some non-linear function. It does not need to be linear, it works the same way. Now there is the problem of how do we get the standard errors? So, so this, the standard error between these two differences is, uh, is not valid from summary because they are, they are predicted instead of observed. So sum gives you the differences, but assuming that they're observed. There are three main ways of getting the standard errors. The first one is delta method. This is a, an, a, a large sample analytical approximation. So it's basically an equation that you apply to the data and it gives you a result. It gives you an approximation of standard errors that works well in large samples. Then another approach is simulation. I will not talk about simulation in detail, but the basic idea is that instead of uh, calculating uh, these from, from uh, M and, and uh, these, one, these models just once, you, you uh, simulate multiple sets of parameters from the, uh, the sampling distribution of the estimated variance covariance matrix of that model and then, then you do the calculation based on that. I'll talk more about that in another video. And then there's bootstrapping and I'll talk more about that bootstrapping approach in a, another video too. How do we do it in practice? So this is a Stata implementation that gives you the delta method standard errors. So we will be using margins here and uh, margins implements delta method which is nice because it's, it's fast to calculate 
but it might not be the best in, in very small samples. Some important things that we do here. First, the average direct effect is calculated simply by adjusting t. So it's adjust the prediction of t at 0 and 1 because we are predicting at, at holding m at the observed value. So, so what is the value of t assuming m does not change? That is the average, average direct effect or natural direct effect. Calculating the mediation effect is a bit more complicated. So uh, we need to first make a system out of these two equations using SWEST. And the reason why do we need to make them uh, form a system out of the two equations is that we need to use two different sets of coefficients in margins. And, and this is the way, way to do it. Margins needs to treat these, these uh, estimates as, F is, as estimates. So if we store the estimates in a matrix, then, matri then margins would not know that they are estimates, but it would, be, it would treat them as fixed values. So taking the, the coefficients of, of this regression here and put it in the matrix, taking this coefficients here and putting them in the matrix, and then using the, the matrices here in margins instead of the estimates, the Bs, would produce incorrect results because they would not be considered in the standard error calculation. Then this COEF legend option here in, in, in the SWEST command gives you the technical names of the coefficients which you need for, for writing the margins command. So for example, my underscore mean uh, column D uh, T is something that uh, the, uh, the COEF legend will tell you to use. So, so what, is the, what is the meaning of these margins? How, do, how, do, how does one come up with this kind of margins command? Well, uh, we need to have a custom prediction equation here. So we use the ex expression uh, command and uh, we are simply writing this regression equation here. So we are, we are predicting, uh, we have the intercept, then we have uh, the uh, prediction using observed and not adjusted t. So we are calculating adjusted predictions by adjusting the t but in the actual predictions, we are holding t constant at the observed value and we are adjusting the m based on the t. So uh, adjusting t changes m, which is his y, but it does not have a direct effect. So we need to uh, you predict using the observed t instead of the adjusted t. Then we predict m using adjusted t and we just uh, multiply then uh, this, this prediction of, of m using uh, the coefficient of m. And that gives us the uh, average causal mediation effect. So it's not that complicated to do with status margins. If your model is, is very complex, like you have lots of covariates, then, then typing this equation by hand can be a bit tedious. So there's another approach that you can apply. And uh, here is a different way of specifying the same thing with margins. So if you have, let's say, 10 covariates in the equation, typing the coefficients of those covariates times the, the name of the variable is uh, not something that you want to do. Instead, what you can do is that you start with uh, the linear prediction using the original m and adjusted t. So we are adjusting t here and m is at observed values. And then we subtract the effect of adjusted t and original t here, and then we do the same. So we add the uh, effect of observed t, we add the effect of predicted m to the prediction. And uh, if you have a nonlinear model, then how do you uh, do that? Well, instead of using predict xb, which gives you the linear prediction, you simply apply the link function from your GLM, like you would use exponential model for Poisson regression analysis and inverse logit for logistic regression analysis or the cumulative normal distribution for probit regression. So limitations of the regression-based approach. This approach works well when the model for m or model for y is linear. And uh, for, for nonlinear models, when both are nonlinear, there are special cases where it works. And the, the, the approach that I, I talked about also works when there's one mediator. When there are more than one mediator, if you have like two competing causal paths and you want to understand which one is the one that is more important, then uh, it gets more complicated. There's a really great book by uh, Tyler J. Wonderville about this regression approach. 
it's like a few hundred pages of reading and it, it goes through all the complications on a very detailed level and also how to address those and which at the time of writing in 2015 were still unaddressed by methodological literature. Other cases except this, this one linear needs to be proven on case-by-case -case basis and this book gives you the proofs. So for example if you have a logistic model for, for Y, you have a logistic model for M, then uh, this approach that I just presented wouldn't work directly. You can get odds ratios uh, using, using math, but you can get the predictions like I, I showed because of uh, let's, if we assume that the probability of Y is 0.5 in, in one particular case, then uh, the inverse logit of 0.5 is, is not the same as average of, of these two logits. So uh, the, it works when you have linear because in, in linear outcome or linear mediator or linear outcome then, uh, then uh, the outcome is simply if you have two uh, possible mediator outcomes one and zero then uh, the average of one and zero is the same as the average of of, of predi uh, it's the same as the predicts, uh, probability of one, but it doesn't work if you need to use a link function for the outcome as well. So this is a simple, simple technique, but it's, it does not work in, in all potential cases. IMAI's approach, on the other hand, the simulation-based approach is general. It works in pretty much every condition that you can think of, but it's more challenging computationally. So similarities between the simulation-based approach and the regression-based approach is that they first start with estimating models for Y and M and calculating predictions for M. So this is the similarities, but there are also differences between the simulation-based approach and the regression-based approach. The differences include multiple replications, whereas in the regression approach, you simply predicted one probability for, for under treatment, one probability under control in the binary mediator case. In, in this case, you do multiple replications. And uh, we don't predict expectations, so we don't predict the probability in uh, a, linear, a binary model or like logistic and probit, but instead we predict there are some actual values. So we generate actual values, ones and zeros, instead of, of predicting a probability. And uh, predictions use samples of model estimates instead of the actual estimates. So let's take a look at why we need, need to go all this trouble. So why do we simulate? Why do we take samples of estimates? And why, why all this stuff instead of just using the regression model? Well, this is something that I struggle myself to understand. But the key to understanding why this happens is in theorem one of Imai's paper. So there is a uh, there's some kind of integral over M. So integral over M means that we, we uh, analyze the distribution of M instead of the expected value like we do in the regression-based approach. So we need to look at the full distribution instead of just what is the expected value. And so where does this, this integration integral comes from? It comes from something called the mediation formula which has been introduced by, I think it was Pearl, uh, in the literature on causality. And uh, the, the idea here in, in the mediation formula is that we are not looking at, at, at two predicted outcomes for each individual, but we are looking at how does the distribution of the moderator, a mediator, how does the distribution of the mediator change between the treatment and the control? And uh, those, we don't analyze the differences in expectations, but we analyze the differences in, in distributions. And then we, we multiply each value on, of that distribution with the coefficient or whatever function there is, it's for y, and, and that gives us the causal mediation effect. How this is proven is not important, but uh, to know, you just need to know that this is a very general way. So instead of, of looking at particle value of M under treatment, particle value of M under control for on an individual case basis, we look at the distribution of M and, and under treatment distribution of M under control 
And then what the simulation does is something called Monte Carlo integration. So uh, Monte Carlo integration is a way of calculating an integral. So if we want to analyze the full distribution of a variable, we need to do integration and Monte Carlo integration is, is one way of doing it. So this is a simple example of Monte Carlo integration. Let's assume that we have x, which is normally distributed mean zero standard deviation one, and we want to know what is the mean of x squared. So we know that that's chi square with one degree of freedom and that's, uh, that's worked out in, in any decent stats book. But for, for our demonstration, let's assume we don't know what is the mean of x squared and we want to do Monte Carlo integration to find out. So the idea of Monte Carlo integration is that we, we take a random sample. So we, we take now one observation of x, it's minus 0.0. 7, then we raise it to the second power and then we get that that's about 0.3 or something. And uh, we repeat this many many times. So we draw samples from the distribution of x, we calculate x squared and, and we record these, these x squares. Uh, this dashed line here shows what is the average of these now 35 replications. And we can see that when we do this kind of simulation, we, we most of the time we get x values that are close to zero. Sometimes we get x values that are, are, are far from zero, but they are less common because this is normal distribution. And uh, in normal distribution, the most observations are close to zero. And in about 500 replications or so, we can see that the expected value or the average of these, these squares is uh, here at one. So this is the idea of, of Monte Carlo simulation, Monte Carlo integration. We uh, simulate values from uh, the distribution of, of interest. We calculate the function of interest for, for each of these observations and then we calculate the mean. The idea is that we will then have very few occurrences on the, on the, on the tails as we should be and most observations are here. And this, this works out pretty well for, for many, many problems. So this is the reason why we take multiple simulations. We, we need to calculate the integral presented in the paper. And this is another way of, of, of showing the integral. So um, we calculate the integral and we calculate actual predictions of, of m from the distribution, like we did uh, the prediction. We, we, we simulated values from, for x in the normal distribution in the previous slide, we do the same here. So this is the reason why we do uh, simulations and why do we do actual draws from random m instead of the expected value, because it allows us to do Monte Carlo integration. Now there is the problem of why samples of estimates. And, and this is a bit, a bit tricky to understand. And this is explained really well in the missing data literature. And for example, my video on data augmentation, I talk about this issue in more detail. But the idea is that when we uh, want to estimate what is the expected value of x, then the, the linear model the, or whatever model we have gives us the estimate and that's our best guess. But if we want to characterize or estimate how is x distributed, then uh, using a linear model or whatever model and then the, uh, the distribution of the variable around the model prediction actually is, is a biased uh, estimate of the distribution because it doesn't take the estimation error of the linear model into account. So we draw these samples of, of estimates to take the estimation error into account or the estimation uncertainty. I will not talk about that in detail here, but it's basically the same thing that you do in, in missing data analysis when you do multiple imputation with the data augmentation algorithm. So how do we, we actually implement this in practice? So this is a, a quick R implementation of, of EMI's simulation based approach. And we generate uh, some data. So this is again, full mediation model, 1000 observations. We estimate two models. This time both are probit models. So we generate data from probit model two. And uh, then we draw samples of, of coefficients from from these models. So we, we draw samples, the mean of these random normal variables are the actual coefficients and the variance covariance matrix of the random numbers is the variance covariance matrix of the estimates. And uh, 
then uh, we simulate t1 and, uh, and t0. So these are adjusted predictions for each, ca each case. So we have n is 1000. So the simulated t's are 2000. So we have 1 and 0 for each case. 2 times 1000 is 2000. And then what we do is that we simulate, this one line simulates 1000 replications of, of m for each case under treatment and under control. So this is a matrix product of 2000 by 2 matrix. So it is uh, 2000 by 2, 1 is the, the intercept, that's, uh, intercept is something times 1 and you add that to the, to the model. So this would be called the design matrix and uh, it's 2000, so 1000 observations and, and two adjustments T0, T1 for each case. And then we have this uh, 2 times 1000 matrix, which is two coefficients, the intercept and the coefficient of T. Uh, and this produces 2000 times 1000 matrix. So the, the, the columns are the replications, the rows are the cases under these two adjustments, treated and untreated. Then uh, we uh, calculate for, for each combination of, of, for each replication, for each row of, uh, of the mediator, each value of the mediator, we calculate this kind of uh, matrix product again. So we have 4000 uh, by 3 matrix. So 4000 now is because we have a uh, for each observation, we have four cases. We have the cases where T was adjusted at one and mediator is predicted under T equals one. T is adjusted to zero. The mediator is predicted under T is zero. And then we, have, we are also predicting two counterfactuals where we use T equals zero and the prediction of T equals one. And then we, equal, we have T equals zero and the prediction T of mediator under t equals zero. So we have four different cases that we compare. We, we uh, apply to each condition and then we take, take sums and we will get these uh, causal, uh, average causal effects. This runs in, in uh, maybe less than a second on my computer. And uh, if we calculate using EMI software package, we'll get the same results. It takes two or three seconds on my computer. So, so this is in a nutshell the, the simulation-based approach. Limitations of the simulation-based approach. Uh, Wonder View who advocates regression-based approach says that this takes uh, the main, main drawback of this simulation-based approach is that it takes a lot of computational time if your data set is large. I'm not sure if that's actually true because you're not really estimating things. So if you estimate a, a, a GLM model, for 26 million, like you uh, have here in their example, then that, that takes some time, takes a few minutes on a modern computer. But this is if you have 26 million observations and then you need to simulate 1000 observations, then the matrix products that I showed and that in my software package uses, they, they, they will explode in size. So this is, uh, you will run out of memory on your computer. And when your computer runs out of memory, then uh, it gets slower because it needs to save the results on the hard drive and that's several orders of magnitude slower than just using estimates from the memory. If you're working with large data in a simulation-based approach, then your, your uh, options are basically that don't use the full data, take a random sample. If you have 26 million observations, a random sample of 260,000 observations would be good enough for most purposes. So that's one option. Another option is that then you can go back to, uh, to matrices and just implement it yourself using R, for example, and just split the simulation into smaller tasks where you don't have to calculate a big matrix that fills your computer's memory. So this, these techniques can be implemented using the, uh, the more foundational, more, more primitive tools of your statistical software. I demonstrated the regression-based approach using Stata. I demonstrated uh, the simulation-based approach using R. You know, both can be done in both software, but there are also several packages and these packages are, are constantly developed. This article in Structural Ecosystem Modeling shows you a, a review of, of these uh, six or, or seven common packages. They, they cover Stata. Uh, 
R, SAS, and then M plus. And, and the article talks about the differences between these. So if you want to do this causal mediation analysis or nonlinear mediation analysis, then this article is a good source for you because the first thing that you need to do is to pick a tool. Trying to implement this by hand is a good idea for, for learning. But if you want to uh, use these, then relying on your own implementation is, is problematic for, for two reasons. One, it's a bit tedious to think it through instead of applying these black boxes. And two, uh, how do you know that you've implemented it correctly? So, so verifying your implementation that it actually works right is, is a, a bit of work. So I recommend that you do, do both. So use a package and then uh, you can verify if you've understood the package, what it does correctly by implementing it yourself using adjusted predictions. Now, this part we have talked about binary treatment. So how do we deal with continuous treatment? So we don't have zeros and ones, but we have, for example, our individuals receive different amounts of medication. It's not a yes or no. Or we have, a, 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 let's say, a sports example. We tell people to uh, do running two times more per week than they do normally but the, the running baseline varies between different people. So continuous treatment addresses these questions. The case for continuous treatment is actually not different at all. So all these equations as pointed out by, by Tingley's note in their package documentation is they, they, it's just the same math. So let's take a look at how you do it in Stata. So instead of uh, predicting at t 0 and 1, we predict at t from, let's say, it's from normal distribution, it's uh, from minus 2 to 2 with increments of 0.5. And, and what do we actually do here? Uh, we use a linear prediction using the original M and adjusted t. This is the same thing that I did before. And then we subtract the effect of adjusted t and original M. We add the effect of observed t, and then we add the effect of predicted M. And uh, what this models is, is not the difference between uh, 0 and 1, but it is the difference from going whatever is your current baseline to a particular value. So if you move from, from let's say, let's use running example, and we have treatment would be running once, two times, three times, four times, or five times a week, then uh, if you adjust your current running level, whatever it is, to be five times a week, What's the average effect? And uh, we can use margins here and uh, plot the effect. So, so we would see that if we change everybody to be at minus two on the treatment without changing the mediator, then the expected outcome would be here. So if we manage, set everyone from the current level to 1.5, for example, this is the value of the outcome, holding mediator at observed values. And, and this, this uh, red line is, is the causal mediation effect. So, so what is the um, effect of, of changing the mediator at, at, uh, based on, on different predicted levels of, of t considering the current t and current m? Mediation testing is an active topic. So if you want to do nonlinear mediation, you are in for some reading. There are quite a few recent articles that talk about uh, problems such as measurement error, uh, confounding like if omitted variables, multi-level stuff and, and all kinds of things. So uh, in particularly in the regression-based approach, every case needs to be proven case by case. And then the simulation-based approach, that also has some limitations that need, that need to be studied. And there are also, because this is a hot topic in, in, in some disciplines, there are some good commentaries and, and reviews and guidelines in uh, epidemiology particularly, but also in, there are in, in the modeling literature. So this is an active topic under research, but it's just not uh, something that is active within management. So not all management researchers necessarily read all this literature. 